The fisherman from the last chess puzzle sailed off into the ocean but didn't get far when a giant sea monster came up and was about to swallow him whole. And he said, wait, wait, before you do that, give me a chance to save myself. See if I can solve a chess puzzle. The sea monster thought about it for a moment and said, fair enough, here you go. What's the result of this position? Is it a win for white? Is it a win for black or is it a draw? If you can answer this correctly, I'll spare you. The fisherman thought about it for a moment, but before I tell you what he said, go ahead and pause. What do you guys think the answer to that question is? Who should win this position or should it be a draw? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the fisherman looked at it carefully and said, well, it's definitely not gonna be a win for black because black's king is too far away to stop this pawn. Pawn only needs three moves to become a queen. The king obviously needs a lot more moves to get over there. And none of these pawns can do anything. They're not past pawns. He doesn't have enough time to push this forward and try to create some counterplay. So definitely black's not going to win. However, it looks pretty tricky and looks like it could be a draw because after the pawn pushes, the king's gonna go to a4. The pawn's gonna push. This pawn's gonna push. We get the queen, but then black's going to play the crazy move, a5, totally trapping his king, and white has no way to win the game. This is actually going to be a draw, because anywhere you move the queen is a stalemate. Doesn't matter. You can move it over here. You can move it over here. You can't do anything productive, and there's no way to give black any moves, which means it's just a stalemate. But the fisherman thought he might be getting tricked, so he backed up and thought a little bit longer, and he did discover a clever move for white. What do you think he saw? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, what he saw was h6, king to a4, h7, b5, and not a queen, but a knight. And then after h5, now what do you think he played next? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, hopefully you didn't say capture the pawn. Because if you capture the pawn, it's a stalemate again. Because black can't move. None of the pawns can move and the king can't move. You had to play the move knight to g6, sacrificing the knight because it gives black a move. And now the pawn can push. And now you can push your pawn and get a queen. No! That's not the right answer, actually, because what happens if you get a queen? It's a stalemate again. I know. It's incredible. You have a queen. You have one, two, three. You have four moves to do something with it, or three moves, and you can't do anything useful. If you come over here, everything's defended. You come over here, it's all defended. You can't take any of these pawns. The only thing you could try would be to come down here, swing the queen over for checkmate, but you don't have time because the pawn pushes. And you don't have time because black now actually wins the game. You can't win. So you say, wait a second, how do we win? Promote to a knight. The second knight promotion in the same puzzle, I might, I might add. Black's going to push the pawn. If you'd like to pause, how do you finish off the game from here? You had a chance to look at that both knight to d7 and knight to e6 are correct moves and after the pawn pushes you deliver the checkmate with the knight it's a beautiful smothered checkmate on the king which is trapped wow the fisherman was feeling very proud that he solved that and was breathing a sigh of relief when the sea monster said not so fast you didn't tell me you were such a great chess player I have one more puzzle for you, and you have to solve this one too, or I'm still going to eat you. And then the sea monster presented this position and asked the fisherman the same question. It's white to play. Should white win? Is it a draw, or should black win this position? Before I tell you what the fisherman said, what do you guys think? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the fisherman's logic went like this. It doesn't seem like black would be able to win this unless he's able to capture all three of these. Because even if I sacrifice my pawns, but if I keep my knight close to my king and get my king and knight into a nice centralized position, I can probably draw. So I doubt black is going to win. It seems like it's a toss up between a draw or maybe a win for white, but how can white win? 
And then he discovered a brilliant idea. He discovered the move knight to c1. And it looks like a very simple fork. Like you're just going to go to b3 and fork these guys. But actually, there's so much more going on here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what happens if the rook takes the pawn. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, what the fisherman saw was that you could play c7, threatening to get the queen. The rook can't stop it like this because you just take it. He can't stop it like this because you do have the fork and you would win these pieces. But there is a move black can play, rook to d5 check. And now you have to make a tough decision of where do you move your king to? So before I tell you, what do you think the fisherman said the best move was here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, he said it was the amazing move. Knight to d3. You don't even move your king. You give up the knight for free with check. What? So let's just back up for a second. Why did he say this? Well, if you go here, you get forked. And now you're potentially going to lose. Maybe you can hold on, but now you're, you're getting close to losing. But some of you might say, well, why don't you just come over here? What's black going to do? Well, then... Black is going to put you in check again, and now once you move, they're able to swing down here and stop the pawn, and now the game is a draw. Black's going to sacrifice the rook for the pawn. You can't checkmate with just a king and a knight. Something like this is what's going to happen, right? You can defend it. It doesn't help you. It's a draw, okay? So going back here, you had to find the incredible move knight to d3. Now, you might be saying, wait a second, Nelson. He's going to take the knight, and what are we going to do? Well king to c2 attacking the rook threatening to get a queen the rook can't go here or you take it it can't go here or you take it it looks like we've got him but wait the sea monster said i'll play the move rook to d4 the fisherman said okay i'm gonna push my pawn and i'm gonna get a uh i'm gonna get a rook because he remembered the previous chess vibes puzzle that he saw years ago and he knew what the trick was Rook to c4. It's a fork. You say, Nelson, he can just take the rook. But if he takes it, it's a stalemate. Look at this. It's a draw. King can't move. Very clever trick. So promoting to a rook stops this trick. Because now if you do this, you just take it. And the queen is not covering the square. And so black can move. And you checkmate him. But you might say, well, wait a second. He has a rook and a king. We have a king and a rook. It's the same. How are we going to win? The other point of this is you're threatening checkmate over here. So black has to go there to stop you. But then you have a final move here. If you would like to pause, what is it? That's right. If you said king to b3, you are correct. Boom and boom. It's a double threat. You're threatening checkmate here. You're threatening to take the rook here. And finally, black is out of tricks and they lose the game. They either have to lose their rook or have to get checkmated. Wow. So the fisherman saw that, but he's not out of it yet because going back here after knight to c1, the sea monster said, well, I'm not going to take the pawn. I'm going to go check immediately. And now what do you do as white? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the correct move is not knight to d3. So you might have been tempted to say knight to d3, but now black just takes it with check. You can move forward, but the rook is going to come up, and you don't have time to push this and get a queen because of the fork here. You see that? This pawn is under attack. Even if you push it, there's still this fork, and you're actually losing now. So knight to d3 was a nice move before, but it doesn't work this time. So what do we need to play? King to c2. And now black has to make the decision. They either take your pawn, or they put you in check. If they take the pawn, you can simply go knight to b3 check, taking away the square from the rook, and then you can play c7, and again, black is in trouble here, uh, and they can't stop you. Okay, so what does black do? Black says rook to c5 check. And at this point, the fisherman had a long, hard think and came up with the best move. See if you guys can find it as well. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the best move here is king to d3 giving up your knight for free because this time your king is now close enough 
to go and help your pawn. See, the rook is not going to be able to take any of them because you can just defend. And once you get your king helping those pawns, you're going to win. All right? Because you have two pawns. The rook's going to have to sacrifice for one of them. But you might have said, wait a second. Why couldn't you just go king to d2? Doesn't that accomplish the same thing? And this way you defend your rook. It does not. And here is why. Rook takes b5. You can try to push your pawn thinking that the rook can't go there because you have the fork, right? Look what black's going to do. Rook to b2 check. And you say, I don't care. I'm just going to move. Now watch this move. Ready? Rook to c2. Stopping your pawn from becoming a queen. And you say, well, I'm just going to take the rook, Nelson. That's a stalemate. Look at this. Look at this. The king can't move. It's incredible. It's incredible. So because of that, you had to go king to d3. You had to go king to d3. And like we talked about, if they take your knight, you don't care. Your king runs up the board. But wait, black's not out of tricks yet. They take your pawn and you say, great, I'm going to push. They can't go here because I have the fork. They can't go here because I'll just take it. I'm good to go, right? Wrong. The sea monster plays rook to b8 and says, what are you going to do now, fisherman? Well, if you guys had a chance to look at that at home, hopefully you didn't say capture the rook with the queen because guess what, guys? It's another stalemate. Look at this. How many stalemates have we seen in this one puzzle? And same thing if you take with the rook. It's a stalemate. It's incredible. So what do you do? The fisherman said, I know what the solution is. You take it, but you don't get a queen. You don't get a knight. You don't get a rook. You promote to a bishop. Why a bishop? Because it's not a stalemate. Now the king has places to move. And this configuration of pieces is a win for white. You can always checkmate with the knight and the bishop. If you know what you're doing, it's not easy, but you can win. And that was the only way to win. Wow. The sea monster was very upset, but honored his word and let the fisherman live. Now, if you're wondering how the fisherman got so good at chess since the last chess puzzle that he was a part of, it's probably because he took the Chess Vibes 1000 of 1500 course, which you guys should definitely check out, and the link is in the description. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care. Oh, and by the way, the fisherman will return very soon.